the worst thing you can do in a short prep schedule is show up to the MCAT and have that be the first time you take the MCAT. Joya, back for some more MCAT podcast. How are you doing, my hello, friend? Hello, hello. I'm good. <sighs> I'm I'm a little stressed for today's episode. We've been covering how to create study plans, what to think about when creating your study plan, how long you should be studying. Our first episode uh, of kind of the 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 length study plans was four to six months, and then we went to six plus months. And now we're into one to three months. And to me, that's just super stressful. Either you have no idea or you had no idea what the MCAT was and just randomly your advisor's like, hey, have you have you scheduled the MCAT? And you're like, what's that? Oh, I need to go take it. Oh, no. Um, or you underestimate the MCAT. Uh, you didn't give it its proper respect. You're like, oh, whatever. It's just like any other test. Um Or I don't know. (laughs) You're just like, whatever, I'm going to try and and just take it. Why would anybody want to study for the MCAT in one to three months? First of all, I'm fully tachycardic just (laughs) thinking about this. My heart rate is just through the roof. Um, So the, like, good reason is you are an incredibly strong science student. You took a diagnostic. You were already scoring stratospherically high. Mm. You're on a time crunch. You're applying right now. You've got some other extenuating circumstance that means you have to apply this cycle. You go for it. Yeah. Fine. There are a few of them. They exist. They are unicorns. And if you think you're that person, you're probably not. <laughs> and you should reconsider. But there are like the the unicorns out there in the world. Yep. Um, that's the only situation I think it's actually a good idea. Like you rolled up to your diagnostic cold and just like scored five points away from your goal score. Fine. Take it in one to three months. You know what? Good for you. you. Couldn't be me. I hate you. Yeah. I, I t- Teach me your ways. The way is just being like smart the whole way through. Yeah. Um, too late for that now. But that's the only like real reason to that is like advisable to do it because if you're already that close to your goal score you don't want to spend six months you'll probably start getting worse at some point but more likely than not it's someone who has a specific reason that they have to start med school like in a particular time or an emotional reason that they feel like they can't push back which is something to reconsider um and they are just stuck there Mm -hmm. or like you said someone who's fully underestimated what they're walking into and doesn't know in which case please take this as your warning the MCAT is really, really hard. Please don't roll up to it cold and don't treat it like the SAT where you just like take it just to take it to get a score on the board, which I also don't recommend for SAT students either, but it's a very commonplace thing to do. Don't do it for the MCAT because they see that and they don't super score you the way that they do on the SAT. They see all of your scores. They see everything. And you don't want to have to answer questions about why you took it unprepared. That's an uncomfortable thing to have happen in an interview. Don't do it. If you're not ready, that's what a diagnostic is for. Take a diagnostic if you're like curious how you're going to do. But if you are in one to three months for whatever reason that you have to do it now, you have to do it soon. And that's the only choice that you have. um, You got to be real, real judicious with your time. Um, You have to be very honest. Yeah. It, we've mentioned this in the previous episodes. You are not a fan of only studying for the MCAT during chunks no. of time. If someone is like, this is the way that I think I need to study. I have two months. This is the only thing I'm doing. I'm not in classes. I don't need to work. I'm living at home. This is the only yeah. thing I have. Do you think it's it's doable? It's just very stressful. And, yeah. and obviously I think high it's risk stressful of burnout. But doable. High risk of burnout, high risk of just like full implosion. But this is the only length of time that I would ever say yes to someone saying I'm going to do nothing else. Like if you've got the summer, you've got summer break yeah. and you're like, I'm going to do it before I go into my senior year. And then I'm going to have this MCAT score that I can apply with and go straight through from undergrad to med school. Good for you. You yeah. know what? If you can do it, if you have the financial and logistical security to do nothing else, go for it. Um, I do think it will hurt your brain. Yeah. And probably also your body because you're going to sit really still for a really long time. <laughs> but that's the only situation in yes. which I would ever really in good conscience say you can eliminate everything else from your life. I think past that you're really like going to harm yourself. But yeah, you could you could hole up in a room for three months and do it over the summer. Like you could do it. Treadmill Again, risk. wouldn't recommend it, but it's possible. Yeah. It is possible. 
Um, I think the important thing for that though, is you got to know yourself. Like, do you have three months of, of like pedal to the metal in you? Like, have you ever done something like this before? Do you know how you work under pressure? Like you have to know if you are going to perform well with the clock ticking so loudly in your ear before you commit to something like this. Yeah. Because a lot of people don't realize that they suck under pressure until they <laughs> apply this kind of pressure to themselves. It's fine. Not everybody's made to like do work with yeah. that amount of stress involved, but you have to know that you have to be this again. This is my theme. I should wear it on my forehead. Be honest with yourself. Yep. And if you don't know how to be honest with yourself, find someone who will be honest with you. Yeah. But if you're going to do it, you you should not have been out of school for a while, I think is my big thing. Unless you have been like a college professor of all four of the sections and that's what out of school means to you, please don't do a one to three month as a non-trad. Please don't. Yeah. Speaking as a non-trad, don't do it to yourself. It's going to hurt. It's probably not going to go well either. If you are a science major with a stellar academic background, you're really confident in all this material, you took it all very recently, maybe you tutored it, maybe whatever, fine. Um, if you're a non-science major, don't do this to yourself. Don't do one to three if you majored in something that has zero to do with MCAT concepts, yeah. please. And also don't do it if you took science and did badly in your science courses. Mm. It's not going to feel good. If you know that you need content bolstering, the one to three month is not for you. Yeah. That's like real hard bottom line. Yeah. It, it seems like it, it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it, that if you're going to study for one to three months to take the MCAT, you're not going to have time for any sort of course. You're gonna do a, no. a little bit of content review and hopefully you're gonna focus on practice tests. My gut tells me that the people who are doing one to three months of, of MCAT prep are probably also making the big mistake of only doing content review and then going and taking the mm. test, maybe for the first time, maybe they did one full length and they go and take the test. <laughs> no, yeah. please. Especially even if you're doing one month, that's enough time to take all the AAMC tests. Yeah. You can do it and you should. If you're in, four, if you've got four weeks, man, just like, just hammer AAMC and sit with a, whatever prep books you've got and look up everything you don't know and try to put it in your brain. Yeah. Um, but that's all you can do in a month. In three months, you can get through a lot of modules while doing practice questions, but you're going to have to do them at the same time. You're not going to have several months of dedicated content review before you start kind of seeding in practice questions and thinking about pacing. You're going to do it all at the same time. When we look at the study planner, you'll see the days are so long, you have to click show more to see everything you're supposed to do in a day. Um, with a course, most courses are three to four months. You could get through an accelerated course if you do a one to three. We do have some, most of the third parties offer them. Blueprint does where we have a twice a week class. That usually meets on like a Tuesday, Saturday, or like a Wednesday, Sunday, or something like that. The workload is extreme. Um, I do not teach those classes because the teaching load is extreme. Yeah. Um, it's intense. It's doable. Like the crash courses exist for a reason because people historically have done them, succeeded at them, and so they keep existing. Yeah. Um, again, it's a choice. It's a it's an extreme choice. Um, but I can see why someone with a really tight schedule life or someone whose school year is so chaotic they know they can't study during it is like i gotta do it during the summer i just gotta do it i gotta yeah. get it done during the summer that's all the time i got and i'm like all right so if that's the case and you want to do a course because you like structure do an accelerated course or a course that has flexible like jump around so you can like go to two lessons in one week even if they're different instructors mm -hmm. which is something you can do at blueprint you register for your class which is four months long but you can pop in and watch other recordings or go to a different class if you can't make something. Yeah. So you could you could squeeze it if you needed to. Um, so that's something you can do. And then you should just be really focusing on practice exams yeah. and learning content as you mess it up on the, on the practice exams. Do not try to do in a three month prep course, a month and a half of dedicated content before you start doing practice tests. You need to see a lot of them. The worst thing you can do in a short prep schedule is show up to the MCAT and have that be the first time you take the MCAT. Please, if you <laughs> please. learn nothing else, yes. please don't do that to yourself. That's so awful. Yes, don't that let sounds that be you. terrible. And and the, don't let that be you. the MCAT course that you're talking about where there's classes and everything else, that's the Blueprint Live Online that's Blueprint, course. Yeah, Blueprint yeah. Live Online, you'll register for a class that has specific dates. 
meets once or twice a week for the accelerated with a specific instructor, yep. but you have the ability to pop into a different class and go to lesson two with someone else if you can't make lesson two of your own class. And it's very easy. It's something you don't have to request. You can schedule it in your own portal. It's a couple of clicks. Yeah. So that's a level of flexibility that really does help if you're trying to do something like a really truncated study plan. But again, we make our courses 16 weeks for a reason. We think that is a good amount of time to take class. We usually assume people aren't taking the MCAT the day class ends. They have usually a month. And something we do in class at the end of class is we say, okay, what's your post-class plan going to look like? Yeah. And we talk with students about making up that month. I think our accelerated courses are 10 weeks. So even that, we don't, I don't think we have a month course. I don't think anybody <laughs> has just a one month course. Yeah. So, um, so maybe there's a few, but they're hard. So let's look at a potential reason Potential, which again, I don't think is right e either way. Where, where I've seen students study for the MCAT in one month, and that is a retaker. Someone, I, I've, uh, seen, yeah. I've seen lots of applications where a student took the MCAT in, in June, got their score back, um, or, or knew they didn't do well, and just registered for yeah. the next one. Um, and you see a July date on there too, and those scores usually aren't very different. Um, yeah, talk, talk something about, big's got to happen. Yeah, talk about for for retakers this one to three month study schedule. Um, it, it, what that looks like. It's it's uh, it's an understandable impulse. I get being like, I took my MCAT. Maybe I took an MCAT that was too close to application day, and I don't really have a lot of wiggle room. So I took a like May or a June and I just feel like I have to get it done. I don't want to push my application back a year. You got to have a lot of free time that month. Yeah. And you have to have a very good understanding of what went wrong. Mm -hmm. If all you do is study the way you studied for the first test for an extra month, your scores maybe not going to go up. Some people go down. They stay the same. It's not going to be a huge difference. Yeah. If you realized on take one, oh my God, I forgot to memorize my physics formulas. You just didn't know you had to have them memorized and you bombed that section for that very specific granular reason. Sure, that you can remedy in a month, for yeah. sure. If it's something like that, or you're like, I just didn't learn the psych social terms. I just didn't do them. I forgot, which is a thing that happened. <laughs> yeah, you could do that in a month. That's doable. That's like a very reasonable, I have a specific granular time-gated reason that I didn't do well on the first retake, on the first take, and that's all I need to work on. And everything else of my test taking is fine, fine. But I don't think that's common. I think usually students who feel bad, feel bad in like a nebulous way. And they walk out of their first take going, that didn't feel good. I ran out of time. You're probably not going to become a magically much faster test taker in just a month. Like that kind of pacing thing takes a lot of time to get faster. It is very much like running. You're not going to go from a 20 minute mile to an eight minute mile in a month. Yeah. It's not going to happen. And it's not going to happen if you're a 20 minute, 20 minute passage person, you're not going to get down to eight minutes in a month either. So I think if you're a retaker and you have that urge to reschedule exactly a month out, ask yourself the question, do you know what went wrong? Yeah. Do you even know what went wrong? Is it something small? Is it something fixable? Is it something concrete? Mm -hmm. If it's just, I'm bad at cars, that's not a one month fix. If it's, I am struggling with English, like the language, and that is why the reading comprehension is hard for me. That is really not a month. Yeah. And I've worked with a lot of people for whom English is a second language who are like, that's screwing me up on all four sections. Like, it's literally that I do not understand, like from a linguistic perspective, I don't know what these questions are saying. And I'm like, yeah. that's a good reason to take one of the long study plans in your approach, because you just need familiarity. Yeah. Learning a language is an exposure game. And there's 24 hours in a day. So a month is just not going to have enough time for something that requires long-term exposure and requires a lot of iterative practice. So makes sense. I'm really against the, the retake in a month. <laughs> yeah. um, it makes me really sad because I think it also demoralizes students. Yeah. And then what I've seen as a pattern is like take one didn't go well. They took it again a month out, having not even gotten back their first score mm -hmm. that also didn't go well. And yeah. then they like stopped and reassessed and were like, okay, I'm going to push back to next cycle and I'm going to retake later. But then at that point, it's take number three, mm -hmm. which is something that a lot of schools are going to bother you about. And then they also feel terrible by that point. Yeah. I don't want you to get to take number three. And and I don't want anybody to get 
there. And your stress level goes up and you're more anxious during the test because yeah. you're like, this is my third test. I don't want to take it a fourth time. I don't want to take it a fifth time. Yeah. Um, and so that that hinders performance as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's like oh, stressful. Oof, very stressful. <laughs> um, but I think just like we said for the um, for the one to three month not retaker, there are some concrete reasons that you could do it that would make sense. You just have to know for sure that those concrete reasons apply to you yeah. before you take that plunge. Yeah had a bad night's sleep the night before or whatever. Um, yeah, that's if you're prepared, if you're like AMC averages are at or above your goal and it was just on test day, your computer froze, yeah. you like got lost on the way there and you were so anxious, you just like completely flubbed the first five passages of Kempfis. Fine, retake it in a month. That's fine. Because that's not actually a preparation issue. Yep. That's a test day problem. Yep. And that is easily recoverable in a month because you don't really need the month. Definitely. The month is a formality because of registration. Definitely. Um, yeah. Again, for those of you listening on the podcast, go over to YouTube, go to the end of this video, and we'll show you what uh, an actual, and I'm scared to bring it up, <laughs> what an actual um, very short schedule looks like. How how many months is this one? Two months? This is three. This is a three Luke month one. actually wouldn't let me make it shorter than that. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, you're taking full length every day. You're doing modules, so many of them, um, just so many every day. And this is, again, not counting the flashcards you have to do, yeah. the iterative review you have to do, the going over your lessons learned journal, the amount of like going back to modules and trying to make connections. Like this is so much stuff. Oh, this is overwhelming yeah. to look at. Like this hurts me. Yeah. Um, it's just a wall of text and colors. It's a <laughs> wall. And you know, there are ways to triage within modules and test out of modules that you're really familiar with. You don't always have to do the entire thing, the hour and a half or however long they're supposed to take. You can watch things on double speed, et cetera, et cetera. But there is no way to like finesse your way out of the wall of work that a three month study plan presents you. Like this is pretty dire. This is rough. Um, yeah. And this means like this kind of schedule you can't have anything else going on. Like I cannot imagine someone trying to do this schedule and also like being in school or having family obligations or having a job. And so it's just like not feasible for I think a lot of people. Um, this is rough. This is hard to look at. Yeah. So moral of the story, try not to study for only one to three months. Uh, try, yeah. try to shoot for that four to six month. Uh, and if you need a little yeah. bit more content review, you need to go a little bit slower than uh, a little bit of a longer one. So yeah, hopefully this series was helpful for you to, to figure out what you need to do uh, personally. Again, not what other people do, what got them their 525s, but what you specifically with, with your specific life situations, what you need to do to maximize your score.